All right, so I've changed out. I've got a 2132nd drill in here. I've slowed my RPM down to uh, 600 RPM. So we'll go ahead and drill this out. Again, I'm only going through about an inch. So as I go into there, so, and I can read the measurement, how deep I need to go off of my scale that's right here on my tailstock. So, uh, so I'm seeing one inch, I can go to about two on my tailstock. There you go, so I'm an inch deep. So I'll bring the drill bit back out of the hole. When we are drilling holes and boring holes on a uh, lathe, sometimes it's difficult because we're blind. We can't really see inside and see what's going on. So we got to be really careful with that. So, and uh, now that I'm done with that drill, I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to leave that drill bit in the drill chuck. So, because uh, I got some other tooling and other stuff to do here. So next step here is to go in with my boring bar and to bore out that ID to the size that I need. Now, uh, we did a 21 30 second drill. So that should be, uh, we'll still use our calipers to take our measurement. So I can just use the ID part of the caliper here. And right now the whole size of that is measuring uh, 600 and um, now let me get a better grip in here. So we're measuring about 643 or 650 actually. And I don't want to be too much uh, larger than that. So I'm only going to take 25 thousandths. I want to be about uh, 675 thousandths of an inch um, on that one for uh, the finger, the person who's going in. Now, uh, with the boring bar, we need to make sure that our hole is small enough so that we can get that boring bar in. And you can see here uh, that the boring bar is inside. I also need to make sure that the boring bar hangs out far enough so that I'm not gonna crash in. Now, there are some other things to consider with boring bar. The longer we hang this out, the more chatter and deflection we can get. So generally we wanna try to keep everything as uh, stubby as possible here and as rigid as possible so that we don't get uh, um, too much overhang. Now, uh, I'm also gonna pay attention to the depth. So since I'm already kind of uh, there, I can kind of observe where I'm at just so I know, remember we're blind here. So I can just kind of make a mark on my uh, boring bar to let me know when I'm getting close to the backside there uh, and getting close to the depth. All right, now, again, just like the way we touch off on the uh, OD, we're gonna come in and touch off on the ID here as well. So I need to uh, turn my RPM back up. So I'm gonna go back up to 1100 RPM. So, and touch off here. And now I can start to turn. Now, the other problem with pouring a hole is oftentimes we can't get the chip to come out. So, so you need to be aware of that uh, as we go and pay attention. I'm getting close to depth right here, so I'm gonna stop, move back to the middle, and re extract the boring bar. You can see exactly we were getting kind of a stringer and how that kind of packed up on the boring bar, which is not really a big deal with we're dealing with plastic. If we were cutting other types of metals, uh, we would certainly want that chip to break here as we go. So let's measure this. And I am at uh, 670. I want to be at 675, so I got another five thousandths to go. So we're going to go back into the hole and move another five thousandths in. Now, I paid attention to my dial last time, so I know where my mark was, so I know where to come back to. So, so we're going to come back to that mark. And 
There's my five more thousands here. Nice speed rate, control it as I go in. Back to center and out of the hole. I should be good to go. And that should fit the person's finger. So, all right, couple of things now. I wanna chamfer this. So I'm gonna remove my boring bar and I'm gonna put a uh, chamfering tool in. Now, this is a 45 degree chamfer. I'm using a brazed carbide uh, cutting tool. It's kind of an old fashioned tool, uh, but I just need to kind of chamfer the OD and the ID. So I'm just gonna come in uh, touch off and move about uh, 20 thousandths to give me a 20 thousandths chamfer on both the OD and I. Okay. And there's the ID chamfer. There's the OD chamfer. So, and I'm using both sides. So, taking a look here again at my uh, braze carbide uh, 45 degree chamfer tool, I'm using uh, this side to cut the OD chamfer, and I'm using this side to cut the ID chamfer. So, take that out. Now we're ready to part this off. So, so here's my part off tool. So, so we'll put this in. Now, I have to take into account the thickness of the part off tool so with this being said so I'm going to measure uh, the part off tool is 90 thousandths uh, basically about 93 thousandths uh, thick and I want this ring to be a quarter inch uh, thick band so so I need to move uh, 250 thousandths for the quarter inch plus 93 thousandths for the thickness of that band so that would be, we're just gonna keep the numbers simple here. We'll say an additional 100,000. So I'm gonna need to move 350 thousandths uh, for that band. So, so I'm gonna come up here. So, and I'm gonna get close. And I'm gonna kind of feel this out as I go. So we're kind of touching off with the face, but I don't wanna cut anything because I'll make a mark. So I can kind of see exactly where that's at. All right. so. So now the left edge of the part off tool was touching the face of the part. So now I can go back and now I can move this the 350 thousandths that I need to. So let's go ahead and there's a 100 thousandths. So 200 thousandths, 300 thousandths, 350 thousandths. And you can see where I uh, am at here on this as we go. So I'm 350 thousandths. Uh, I'm gonna start to part this off, but I'm not gonna part it off all the way. I'm gonna go in uh, about uh, an eighth of an inch uh, or a little less, and I'm gonna bring it out because I also wanna chamfer this side too. So let's turn this on and start this cut. Wait for that to stop. Get this string off of here. I want you to come in and so you can see, uh, this is also considered a groove. So we could say that's a grooving tool uh, as well as a part off tool. And I can make grooves this way too. But right now I'm exactly where I want, except I want to put a chamfer on this side too. Now, uh, this is one of the real areas where you need to be real safe and uh, be extra careful because we're going to uh, use a file. So. I'm gonna come over the guard and over my tooling here, and I'm gonna use my file like this to just get a chamfer on that. You obviously wanna be very, very careful when you do this so that nothing gets cut, uh, stuck and caught to sling this back at you. So let's go ahead and turn this on, and I'm gonna real quick. Won't take much to get that on there. You can see the chips forming. So, there we go. 
that looks pretty good let's slow it down shut it up yep so i got a nice little uh, chamfer on there uh took a little bit more on this side than i did on that side so this is a hand finishing i can kind of go back and i'll hit the other side make sure you're at 45 degrees when you're filing this okay there you go that looks pretty good now i'm gonna go back in and part this off all the way now but i don't want this to kind of fly off by itself so so there's different ways that you can accomplish this uh, i'm gonna put a drill back in here for a second i'm gonna put the drill bit back in uh, lock it in place uh, i'm not gonna be cutting i'm using a smaller drill bit i'm just gonna kind of use this as a parts catcher more or less so and i don't want to go too far into there because i don't want my parting tool to hit that drill bit but so but that you can use uh i use a drill bit here you can use a small diameter rod anything that will just help to catch that piece and keep it uh, from slinging at you when it goes to part it off so i'm going to finish parting this off to finish this round So there you go the ring is off and finished so and there we go nice little ring now this is of course plastic so i'll take a router burr i'll clean off and get rid of the burr on that side and there i have a nice little uh ring for somebody to wear um made out of white bell ring so and that's how we're gonna the process that we're gonna use here to make these rings